Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with the second volume of Da Capo's Carl Nielsen, The Masterworks. And in some ways, the second volume is, is more valuable than the first volume, because the first volume had the symphonies and other orchestral works in very, very fine performances. Excellent performances, really. But uh, that music is available um, in many, many performances that are also you know, just equally good, even on Da Capo. So it's not as necessary, but this is pretty necessary because this second volume contains six discs of the chamber and piano works. And they are marvelous pieces that are as good as unknown for a couple of reasons. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to them you know, in a moment, but I wanna just tell you what's in here and then turn you loose and suggest that you really give this stuff a shot because it's very, very, very good music. Um, and uh, like I said, you know, people don't give it the time of day and they should. So what do these six discs contain? Well, I can take them out this way and we can do it with the back of the disc or we can do it from the very nice booklet that comes with it. Uh, first, we have string quartets. Now, Nielsen wrote four string quartets and one string, string quintet. They are, they are mostly, mostly early works. One of them is not. One of them is the string quartet in F, Opus 44, which he wrote in 1906 and revised in 1919. It's still a, it's, it's a middle maturity work, let's call it. You know, it's around the time of the Second Symphony, you know, the Four Temperaments. But the others are all before that. And because they're early works, people say, well, they're, you know, they're early works. They're not as characteristic as his later music. And of course, they're not. That doesn't mean they're not very good music. Nielsen was himself a string player. He him, had a wonderful and interesting harmonic sense. His, his music is always, I think, um, interesting and original. He was himself as a composer even even before his Opus One, which was that you know little suite for string orchestra, and so I think these pieces are worth hearing, uh, and it's not as if it's not as if they're not, um, well, you know, what, what's the word? Mature, immature. They're not the right. It's not the right words. It's not as if they're not complete, well realized, serious, properly thought out. Everything he wrote, he revised it all. They were all published. He was he was proud of these works. And deservedly so, they made his early reputation. And yes, they are more traditional. They are more in the, what you might call the Brahms, Schumann, you know, sort of German line of things without quite that striking harmonic originality and, and linearity that he later developed. But that's not a crime. It really isn't. And so what, what do we have here for the string quartets? We have the string quart quartet in G minor, opus 13, uh, and the string quartet in F that I just mentioned, opus 44, the string quintet in G major, that's the earliest of everything here, which is it's a lovely work, it really is. It's a, it has an extra viola, it's a viola quintet. And we have the, another, the F minor, opus five from 1890, and the E flat major opus 14 from 1897-98. Now, by the time you get into the late 1890s, you're really, you, Nielsen has arrived. And so these are wonderful performances. They're wonderful pieces, pardon me. The performances are also wonderful. They're played by, oops, they don't tell you on the back of the box here, on the back of the tray card, so we'll go to the booklet. Let's go to the scorecard, yeah. It's the, the Danish String Quartet, and they're excellent. Excellent, beautiful performances. So I, I really recommend that you listen to these quartets. If you like chamber music, if you like quartets, if you like Nielsen, you need to get these. And there aren't so many performances of them. I mean, there are. There, they've been, I mean, I, I just contradicted myself. There are a few. That's what I mean. You know, there's a very nice set on BIS. Naxos has them. You know, they're, they're, they're the usual culprits. Have, have done them. And, and they're always done well when they're done at all because they're done by groups that have a feeling for the music and that care about it. So, but, the, but these are as good as any and they're, they're a, it's a very convenient way to get these things. Then there's an incredibly early piano trio in G major from 1883. This is truly an ephemeral work. It's only 10 minutes long. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it shows a budding composer budding, but he's still in bud form. So, you know, we have, to, we have to give it a little indulgence there. Then there's the Serenata in Vano. 
this is from 1914, for clarinet, bassoon, French horn, cello, and double bass. A very interesting little work. And the wind quintet. Now, the wind quintet. Ah, the wind quintet. What what can I say about the wind quintet? It's one of the the ultimate masterpieces of wind quintettedness. It's an amazing, amazing piece of music. Brilliant, fabulous. And it's, you know, it's, it's just so interesting. You know, Nielsen was, of course, a string player, which meant that he was most interested in wind instruments. <laughs> Later in his career, he began to get fascinated with the sound of wind instruments. And like all great composers, he understood that great orchestration depends on how you handle the wind, woodwinds. The woodwinds are the personality of the orchestra and of the instrumental ensemble. They really are. And this wind quintet is just fabulous. Uh, you know, every wind quintet in the world plays it. Uh, it's just a great, great, important work. It's from 1922, a very late work. It's at the same time that he was writing his concerti for winds, the flute concerto, the clarinet concerto. He had planned to do a concerto for each of those instruments, but he didn't live to complete the cycle. But at least we have this quintet. It's wonderful. Then there's a fantasy piece for clarinet and piano from 1881. Tiny little work, four minutes long. And two fantasy pieces for oboe and piano from 1889. See, even back then, he was, he was figuring out what to do with the woodwinds. I mean, just for the woodwind stuff here, this is a valuable set, just to hear Nielsen's development as he, as he grew into each instrument. And he felt the same way about them. You know, even he wrote, when he wrote pieces like, you know, that, that bizarre second movement of the Sixth Symphony, you know, he would say, you have, to, you have to get into each instrument and wake them up individually. And we hear him doing that compositionally in these pieces. It's fascinating. Then there's a canto serioso from 1913 for French horn and piano. And so let's see, some, some little, little, little uh, what you call it, incidental music things from modern. You get The Fog is Lifting for Flute and Harp, which I actually used as one of my mystery pieces back when I was doing that before I found out that there was this program out there where you can just play a, a, a snippet of something and plug it in and it tells you what it is from any piece of music in the universe. Boy, that took the fun out of life, didn't it? But you get The Fog is Lifting for Flute and Harp, and then Children are Playing for Flute Solo, and Faith and Hope are Playing for Flute and Viola three little tiny worklets and they're adorable they are adorable the fog is lifting is a, a very very famous piece in in denmark and all of my danish listeners immediately knew what it was oh i thought i had everyone stumped i was such a fool i had never counted on the international nature of these videos it was very funny boy did i learn my lesson okay then we have the two violin sonatas from 1895 and 1912, two of the great 20th century violin sonatas. They're in three movements each. They're fantastic works, completely Nilsonian and wonderful works that nobody listens to. And there's no excuse for it. Nielsen was a terrific violin sonata guy. They're wonderful pieces, absolutely wonderful pieces. And then we wrote two amazing works, late works, for solo violin that are two of the outstanding pieces in the solo violin repertoire, extraordinary and totally unknown, even to most violinists. I mean it, I've, I've mentioned it to like violinist friends. I said, you do the Nielsen solo violin music instead of like Bach every five minutes. And they're like, well, no, who, what, eh. yeah, well, there's a prelude theme and variations for solo violin. It's an 18 minute long solo violin piece. Violinists have a look, they're very difficult. Very, very difficult works. Remarkable works, they really are. And then there's a prelude and presto for solo violin, which is 11 or 12 minutes. I mean, these are big, beefy, serious pieces, and they really deserve an outing. Then we've got the, the uh, piano music. All of the piano music, the Symphonic Suite, Opus 8, his piano music for Young and Old, Opus 53, which is a late piece, 26 minutes of short sniglets in two volumes. Um, uh, theme and Variations, Opus 40, which is another big 17-minute solo thing. It's like the violin piece. It's, it's a, a big deal. And all of this music is very well played by Hermann D. Koppel. Koppel is, is the, the father of the, this whole dynasty 
of, of Danish musicians, many of which had been recorded on Da Capo. They were a very good couple and his sons. You know, they were all musicians. And then there's the Chacon, Opus 32, from 1916, which is another major movement. And the Luciferian Suite, Lucifer meaning angel of light, not, you know, light illuminated, not like Satan. You know, I mean, you got to pick your terms here. That's one of his great piano pieces. It's a suite in one, two, three, four, five, six movements. And then some humoresque bagatelles, Opus 11. Five piano pieces, Opus 3. Three piano pieces, Opus 59. Um, and that is the piano music. It works. The piano music has been recorded, very well recorded, by, by several very, very fine pianists. It, it exists very conveniently on two discs. I mean, he was not a pianist. He didn't write a lot of piano music. But what he did is extremely individual. It's full of that Nielsonian personality that we all like. And that's it. The only thing that's not on here, frankly, is Commotio, you know, that big organ piece that he wrote. Um, for some reason, I guess it's, well, it's not really a chamber piece, is it? It's just a solo instrumental piece. But this does say chambered instrumental works, so they could have stuffed Commotio on here. Um, but that's okay. It's okay. This is a valuable and very interesting, beautifully recorded, excellently played, important set. For those of you who are interested in Nielsen, who enjoy the symphonies, who want to stretch your, stretch your imaginations and, and, and check out the other stuff he did, you're going to want this. It's a good deal. It's a beautiful production, a class act really a class act. And I, you may have noticed if you were looking at the comments when I did the first volume of this series that Da Capo was listening when I said, please, please, please do a complete Nielsen edition. We need to do it. You have it. You can do it. I hope they are. They say that they're paying attention. So who knows? Keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care.